historically and currently accurate. The Jika Tabby. Even if you aren't Japanese, I'm sure you recognize this shoe. Growing up, I was a huge martial arts and anime fan. Well, thanks to modern times and thanks to Bezos' procurement apparatus, I used my credits to buy a pair of Jika Tabby. And I was surprised with the assortment from which I could choose from. But I settled with a mid-height Jika Tabby made by Rikio. Now, my first impressions. Well, first of all, the packaging in which these shoes arrived in kind of gave me a clue as to the utility of the average consumer who wears these shoes. As in, these were definitely seen as work shoes and not high fashion. And while high fashion Tabby brands exist, this version was definitely not one of those. Sizing. Well, this is an 11 and a half. It is approximately 19 centimeters tall, weighs in about 208 grams per shoe with an insole of 58 grams and a cushion of 16 grams. The toe box width is 117 millimeters and the heel is 76 millimeters. The shoe is a black canvas upper that has a seam that runs along the middle up the upper, delineating the big toe section from the smaller toes. It features a thin cotton fabric inner lining, and it has multiple rows of stitching along the sides and the heel, on the heel counter and on the toe counter. Now, this has great grip to perform most activities. No laces here, but traditional kohase. These are tabs, seven of them on this shoe, which run along the heel's length and they have these three bands of threaded loops that allow you to adjust the level of tightness around the ankle. The gum outer sole, extremely grippy, and it's also sewn and glued, and also extremely flexible. The design of the tread is unique with these raised ridges that protrude through the center. The first days were a little squeaky until they wore in, and then I was as silent as a the inner sole was thin, but it featured a heel wedge. This level of padding is completely unnecessary, and I don't understand why they would deviate from such a true working platform in order to adopt a Western ideology, which has proven zero benefits to anyone. Luckily, it was glued into the inner sole of the shoe, and so I just separated it out and once I took these two aspects out of this, it really felt like no other shoe. So in order to bring it down to its true zero drop glory, I took the insole out and I was able to separate the padding from the insole. And I wore it like this for a little bit and that felt great. Provided a little cushioning, a menial amount, not enough to lose my uh, sensory input. And then I decided, let me just take this out also. And that's when the shoe really felt like a different world. It feels like standing on a strong cotton sandal. It has a woven feature at the bottom, but it doesn't bother your feet at all. But these had to go. This is, if anyone is out there buying Giga Tabbies, Tabbies of any type, please make sure that if these are in your shoes, take them out immediately. You see, the further from the ground I feel is the less feedback I get from the ground. And this inner sole was at least two to three millimeters at least, and the padding maybe five to seven millimeters. Now on the bottom is still a knitted pad of an inner sole, so to speak. And while the stitching is exposed, it is holding up quite well, and I wear these shoes very often. As for the fit, the upper stays up once it's buckled. The foot tray feels snug. I would say that the shoe runs true to size. Definitely feels different walking in these in comparison to normal round toe shoes, especially when the shoe is left unbuckled. You see, most shoes use the curve of the heel to keep your feet inside. But in this case, the foot has more of a feel of being held secure by the strength of my toes and gives you a more natural sensation of walking that is very different 
than even wearing a thong style type of flip flop. And they fit wide, which is great, giving you enough lateral room to really stretch your toes. In terms of looks, it will definitely get you some attention. The rareness of seeing this style of shoe in person leaves people more curious. You see, we're familiar with the five fingers more than we are for this split toe design. What I liked about the shoe, the concept of the tabby is timeless and fundamentally sound. Round front shoes should be considered a regression to this design. From this level of dexterity, you have something that is akin to the five fingers, which I believe is still the height of what footwear should be. But in between that, you find this split toe design works just as well. They're very flexible. The outer sole is very thin. I mean, extremely flexible and durable. And also, I like that this is one of the wider shoes that I've reviewed. A lot of people say that some barefoot shoes are just too narrow. Now, what I didn't like, well, the Kohatsu. While I appreciate the ode to tradition, they would be a lot more manageable without them. Luckily, there are many tabby styles with many alternatives to closing, such as Velcro, zippers, clasps, and even laces. With my ankles width, I had to use the smallest circumference level, which left a noticeable gap at the bottom and allowed the first tab to become undone very often. So much so, it leaves me to wear it mostly open, allowing the tabby design of the split toe and the scoop of the upper to create a hybrid of a sandal and shoe. I also didn't like the packaging. The actual box that I received was barely held together. And I can understand this is a pair of utility shoes, but for the price of $50, I expect a bit more. Who is this for? Well, if you have bunions or flat feet, I suggest immediate ownership. They are remarkable improvements in feel over standard round toe shoes, no matter how flexible and wide they are. Once the inner sole is out of this shoe, this shoe ticks all the boxes of what I would look for in a barefoot shoe. If you prefer, there are numerous options of manufacturers, styles, and patterns for Giga Tabbies. This is not the only brand. They look similar, but use different components and different styling elements. With the dexterity of the tabby, the only shoe I could compare it to would be the Five Finger Vibrams, especially my favorite, the KSO EVO. This is going to be probably the best choice you can make outside of wearing a Vibram Five Fingers. You will receive most of the therapeutic benefits, such as your big toe mobilizing, they also allow room to breathe. Some people who have neuropathy find five fingers aggravating, and some just don't like the tightness of five finger shoes. The Jika Tabby is a great shoe at an affordable price. This is one of the better budget barefoot shoes that you could get. Minimal styling with a maximum of the benefits. This has been Grown and Healthy, the channel where we explore self-improvement through movement. Thanks for watching.